The message today is take my heart. It is thine. It shall be thy royal throne. This message is a prayer. And as you go through this hymn, you see a child of God who desires seriously to live a life that is absolutely surrendered to Jesus. A child of God wants to live a life of consecration unto God. A child of God wants to do all things that please God always. Why is this Imrata asking God to take his heart? Proverbs 23, 26. Hey. Proverbs 23, 26a. My son, give me thy heart. The Holy Spirit is speaking here. My son, my daughter, the first thing I want from you will be your heart. So give me that your heart. The hymn writer was only responding to this God's demand for his heart in obedience to the command of God. Why is it very important for God to take over the hearts of believers? It is because Satan also wants to take over the hearts. Satan can take over the hearts of believers. If those believers are spiritually careless and they are not watching unto prayers. Acts 5, verse 3. Verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Satan took over the hearts of Ananias Safira. Because Ananias and Sapphira were spiritually careless and not watching unto prayer. They could not discern. Void of understanding. And so it is today that the hearts of many believers have been taken over by Satan because of their hypocrisy. So much hypocrisy in the entire church. Why is there hypocrisy in the church? Because the hearts of believers have been taken over by the devil. And so many believers, because their hearts have been taken over by the devil, they honor Jesus with their mouth. But their hearts are far away from Jesus. Matthew 15, 8. Matthew 15, 8. Matthew 15, verse 8. Yes. These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor it me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. These are the hypocrites in the church. Whose hearts have been taken over by the devil. These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Jesus himself, now they talk. And where hypocrites they go when they die? Hell. The heart of Judas, an ordained apostle in the ministry of Jesus Christ, anointed. And powerful service. But what happened to him? Satan took over his heart. Why he take over his heart? Because of the love of money. That is why that hymn writer is saying, take over my heart. My Lord. It is your own. Now you get him. John 13, 27. A. And after the sub, Satan entered into him. After the sub, Satan entered into into Judas. He don't take over the heart. So despite the warning which is all they give Judas for where you know here because Satan don't take over the heart. So also the hearts of many believers today or the hearts of many men of God as long as they have this love of money in their hearts Satan has taken over those hearts. And so many men of God many ministers of God today, covet after money, because of the love of money, and so their hearts were open to Satan to invade and possess these hearts. And so they cannot no longer flee from the love of money, where the Bible says they could flee from, because their hearts have been possessed, taken over by the devil. So they find it difficult to say, Jesus, take over my heart. The sin of Ananias and Sapphira, we be sit and come possess their hustle. Was that they kept back part of the price and they lied to the Holy Ghost because they love money. 
So they they can't convert the one way, way be God's own. Where God says it's holy unto me, touch it not. And so, in the same manner, many believers' hearts in a true church like this have been taken over by Satan. That is why they can keep back part of the title of God that is holy unto God. If you are in this congregation today and Satan has sealed your heart to keep back the part or whole title of God, you can repent today and ask Jesus to take over the heart. He will do it if you repent. Look at Proverbs 28, 24. Verse 24. Who saw Robert, his father, or his mother, and said, It is no transgression. The same is a companion of a destroyer. Anybody who they rob in Papa or in Mama, he said, It's not a sin. It's a normal thing. Since I've been doing it, nothing happened to me. He said, You are a companion of a destroyer. That is, you are in league with the devil. He has taken over your heart. We are talking of. Satan taking over the heart of believers. And they say they are going to heaven. Not everybody they enter that narrow road. You know if you can accommodate plenty. No. Not a few. You can be part of those few. If you choose to. Look at 4 John 2.4. 4 John 2.4. 4 John 2. Verse 4. He that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The same lie where Ananias lied to the Holy Ghost. Now the same lie where people where they say they know Jesus, they believe in Jesus. Yet they are not keeping his words. You say they be liars. You can repent today. Another important reason why Jesus is demanding for our hearts is simply because this heart, by nature, is very deceitful and wicked desperately above all things. He said nobody feel know this heart. And Bible says anybody will put trust in this heart where God say wicked so he says it's a fool. Do anything they do now your mind they guide you your heart they guide you not be Holy Spirit. God say give up this thing. You say now one way they or my nine one do because my heart not to deceive me. Who tell you? God will create the heart say it's deceitful. You say your heart not to deceive you. That is why God is demanding this heart. Because this heart is full of idols. Different kind of idols they did the heart. Before we come to know this truth. And every lustful desire they did this heart. The heart conceives sin. When it conceives a thing, it can bring forth that sin. Then death will come happen. That is why God wants this heart. Because you cannot repair this heart on your own. You cannot put this heart on your own. Now go, now go do them. That's why I say, give me your heart. I know what in did there. You don't know what in did there. Now let me feel handle this heart. But don't struggle this heart with me. Give unto me. Neither him right at the toss. And now from this heart, backsliding the statue. This same heart. When the child wants to backslide, either into apostasy or into the world or back to his vomit, now from this heart, it is start. Before physically they go, they manifest. You're not going to see them again. One is killed the other. Bible says a backslider in the heart is full of his own ways. They know they go the way of God. Though. Now their own way, now they follow. A backslider in the heart. Their own way. So Jesus has to walk upon this heart. That's why he's, he's demanding your heart. But we must cooperate with him to walk upon our heart. How do you cooperate with him? You hear the message, you ask for grace to obey, and you go obey. As you are obeying, he's walking upon what? Upon the heart. For Jesus to do a thorough cleansing in that heart, you must live in obedience to this truth at all times, no matter how hard it is. Because the harder the truth, the greater the cleansing. But if you stop halfway, say it's too hard, then that cleansing stops. The next is that you go back to your vomit. My prayer is that God will do a thorough work in our hearts. Amen. And I will cooperate with him. We are allowing to finish this work of cleansing in the heart.
Don't just be a church goer. We have been taught about the rapture. For that alone, you should be afraid and let Jesus begin to walk upon this heart before the rapture takes place. Because God is not coming to rapture a church or a heart will get spot, wrinkle and blemish. No. I mean, we not miss the rapture. May the Lord complete the work of cleansing the heart before the rapture takes place. And the only thing we go feel clean this heart, now be clean water. And what is that clean water? It's the undiluted word of God and its mysteries. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. 25 to 26. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Why God wants this is that he's full of idols. Now there's Satan, they produce sin. He's saying, go sprinkle clean water upon you. And walk upon this heart. And I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And give you an heart of flesh. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Yes. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He said, cleanse their heart through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That is the mystery of your word is truth. On clean water, you know, if you do the work of cleansing of this heart. What do I mean by on clean water? Now it be false food. False practices that go on in the church. First doting, doting of the devil, where they go in the church. You know, if you clean heart, oh. rather I go make and dirty the more, go make and define and polluted. Worse than waiting God will create the heart to be. Now that unclean water they do for the heart. So those of us who have come to this truth, can't you say privilege to have come to learn of this truth and allow this truth to do this work in your heart? And God will help us to, to cooperate with Jesus. Now, make we see all the things where that him has made Jesus can take over from. He said, Take my hands and let them move. Take my feet, let them be sweet and beautiful for thee. Take my voice, let me sing. Take my lips, let me feed with mercy from thee. Take my silver, my gold, even my money, take them. Take my intellect, I give it to you, use it. Take my will and make it die. Take my love. So it is when Jesus has taken over this heart, when he don't cleanse her, he don't give you new heart. Now go there is there for you to say, Jesus, take over all these sins from me. I give them to you, hand over to you. He said, take my love. When our love is taken over by Jesus, it means nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor past nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why is Paul saying this? Because his heart has been taken over totally by Jesus. His heart has become the royal throne of the Holy Spirit. It was easier for Paul to say, I give you my love, take my love. Now it's not saying, because Jesus has taken my love, nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus. Any child of God will be say, Jesus don't take over in heart. He don't take God, say, take my love. Jesus don't take over in love. Nothing will be separate him from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Whether not family, you no. Know? Whether on uh, poverty, you see chop, you know, see chop, <laughs> height or death, oh. even not even ages, no creature, no human being, go we separate such person from the love of God. When we see love of God, now when you love the truth, now be love of God, oh. and you are living in obedience to this truth, now be love of God. Nothing can separate me, whether they offend me for inside church, oh. then talk roughly to me for inside church, oh. this one, see the, the way they look me. Now you can't serve for church. Now man, you can't serve. Look unto Jesus who you can't serve. Don't look at how they do, how big they do. Everybody run their own race. 
He go go face your own judgment. So what's your problem? Servants of God, they will go face their own judgment. What's your problem? Face where you they go. He go develop from Satan strategy. That believer whose heart has been taken over by Jesus, we don't say, Jesus, take my love, and his love has been taken over by Jesus. That believer will now love Jesus more than anything else in this world. More than anyone else in this world. More than father, mother, son, and daughter. Because love of father, mother, more than Jesus. Not under God be that. That this heart must be cleansed of. You must love him more than anyone else. You can give up anything else in this world. Anyone else in this world for the sake of Jesus. Because he has taken over your love. Anyone will love father and mother, son and daughter, more than this Jesus. You are not worthy of Jesus. You are not his disciple yet. Your heart is not taken over by Jesus. Matthew 10, 37. Matthew 10, 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. To test this our love, of God, examination will come one day. God will come sit down. Let me see who you love now. Now, me, I've been a dad or daughter of your son. Now, me, I've been a dad or father or mother. Because if you gain everything in this world and lose Jesus, where you they go? That person whose heart has been sanctified, having now a new heart, can easily say, Jesus, take my will. Just like that hymn writer said, take my will. So a heart that has been walked upon by Jesus, that has been taken over by Jesus, sanctified by Jesus, cleansed of all the idol in a heart by Jesus, will be easy for that heart to say, take over my entire life. And when that life is taken over fully by Jesus, through the power of this truth, that life becomes a spirit filled life. And any spirit filled life, the steps of that person and his ways are now restricted. You know, they move any high again. You know, they do things any high again. That life is fully now controlled by the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit will direct every of your step and movement now. As you did walk up and down before, not be like that again now. That's a spirit filled life. But my prayer is that God will bring every one of us to that stage. For a life that is taken over by Jesus, that is spirit filled, people around you will not understand you anymore. They will not understand your way anymore. Even yourself, you're not going to be understand your way. It will just be like the wind. We'll be saying, you they hear the sound of the wind. Where did they from come? You don't know. Where did they go? You don't know. Now so, a spirit feel like supposed to be. John 3, 8. John 3, 8. The wind blew it where it listed. I don't hear us the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Proverbs 20, 24. Proverbs 20, 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own ways? The goings of a builder that is spirit feed is of the Lord. You've been controlled now by Jesus who don't take over your life then he himself will not be able to understand his own way. That's what I'm saying. Don't judge a servant of God in a true church anyhow. Be careful. It may not be right in your sight, but inside the court is right. So you're going to judge her now. But you know what's in a God, they move. Every idle talk that you give and you speak against the move of the Holy Spirit in a church, you shall give account that day. You can ask God to forgive your sin. You've now become a wonder 
to your old friends, even to members of your own family, you become strange. John 10. John 10. 19 to 20. Verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sins. And many of them said, He had a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? If they could do it to Jesus, how much more are you now? They will call us on it. Don't mind them. Don't listen to them. Where did they tell Paul to? Acts 26. Acts 26. 24 to 25. Verse 24. Yes. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much plenty doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak for the words of truth and soberness. Paul, he did preach to them. Now Festus then I say, you are your own, no, Paul. You don't learn too much. The truth, it don't turn your head upside down. It don't make you mad now. Now I say, I'm not mad, though. But I'm speaking for the word of truth and soberness. Galatians C, 14b. 14b. Yes. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the word is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Who is talking then? Paul. He said the cross of Jesus Christ don't make him the cross out of the world, because my life is being taken over now. My love has been taken over. Every two of my I surrender all to Jesus. So that surrender. So I'm closer to the world, the world is closer to me. You know, they attract me anymore. And so such a spiritual life does not in any way entangle itself anymore with the affairs of this life. Spiritual believers will never want to lose the anointing of God upon their lives eh? for any worldly or earthly honor. Because that anointing is more important to them. The more you get yourself entangled with the affairs of this life, the more distraction here and there from family. Hey, that's the only one where you get to. Now you only want to do. I beg you, you are the head of the family now. Make you come. Who made you head of family? The law will go, not, not give you. No carry on. Because if not, God give you that law, it will weigh you down. And with the wither, they go spiritually. You know, no. It's a hard thing. But the truth must be said. Now, many believers in the church today say, I don't give my life to Jesus. Whether they have not actually done so. Jesus can never take over their lives. Because the word don't magnetize them. Because this word has a magnetic pool. Where they pull children of God. Many believe in the church. They say they'll be deacon and elders. Or they in the church. Now they go be on the other way of the street. They go charm of uh, one union or the other in their village. They go be secretary in their association. These are the brambles in the church. You don't mind whether they lose their anointing of God upon their lives. They can take any worldly position. If you are married to the world, you are married to Satan. If you are in friendship with the world, you are married to Satan. If you are friends of the world, you are married to Satan. And Jesus can never take over your life. Except you repent and break off. It is when they come out from the world and from the people of the world, will Jesus not take over their lives? 2 Corinthians 6, 17. 2 Corinthians 6, 17, 18. Verse 17. Wherefore, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. God is talking to those who say they want to be spirit-filled. Oh. Say you want me to take over your lives, and rule your life. Then the first thing you are going to do is come out from among them, and be ye separate. And touch not the unclean thing. Any way they do, this unbeliever, touch it not. Because they will pour libation for ground. They will use cola not. They will share money there. Everything that they do there, don't touch it. He said, it is when you do that, I will now receive you. I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. Says the Almighty. You know, these kind of people, we'll be say, they are being magnetized by the pull of this world. The world don't take over them. By inference, Satan don't take over their lives. And yet they are in the church. God said they be like useless vines. Ezekiel 15, look at them. Look at their life. Ezekiel 15, I want to end now. Verse 1. Yes. And the words of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is the vine tree more than any tree, or than a branch which is among the trees of the forest? 
shall we be taken thereof to do any work, or will men take a pin of it to hang any vessel thereon? Behold, it is cast into the fire for fuel. The fire devoured both the ends of it, and the midst of it is burnt. Is it meat for any work? Behold, when it was whole, it was meat for no work. How much yet shall it be meat yet for any work? When the fire had devoured it, and it is burnt. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, as the vine tree among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will set my face against them. They shall go out from one fire, and another fire shall devour them. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I set my face against them. And I will make the land desolate, because they have committed a trespass, saith the Lord God. Trespass of idolatry. Mixing with the word. No wanting to pull out of the word. And yet in the church. They say they are worshipping me. First of all, they are not useful to me. They see now that they are under my anger. The fire of my anger. Now they can't be useful. He said they will go from one fire to another. Until they are burnt with the anger of God. Except they repent and come out. Be separate. Live a spirit free life. Let your way be ordered and directed by the Holy Spirit. Who knows the way? Let your life be now be guided by the Holy Spirit. My prayer today is that the Holy Spirit will take over our lives, take over our hearts, take over our love, take over everything of us, that our lives will now be governed and ruled by the Holy Spirit. Let us stand up to pray. Look, take my life. Let my life be wholly consecrated unto thee from henceforth. Adura. Take over my will, oh. I have no will of my own anymore. Let my will be lost in thy will. That may be well with my soul, that I may make that heaven. Let me not trust in this heart and become a fool. Take over my love. I surrender all. And let my interest in the world die completely. Take my silver, my gold, O oh Lord. Let me not withhold from you when you demand it. Protect my heart against satanic invasion. Let the devil not feed his heart. Let the devil not take over my heart. Give me the grace, O oh Lord, to guide inside jealously, not to allow fitty talk, gossiping, to open the door for Satan to enter my heart. Take my lips and let it be filled with mercy of this truth. Not fitty communication. Not gossiping and barbating. Not I do talk, I do what? Sanctify my tongue. Purge my tongue of iniquity. Let it not defy me, this tongue. Take my feet, oh, let them go beautiful for thee now. Sweet and beautiful for thee. In the name of Jesus. Make me like the wind. Where I'm coming from, where I'm going to let no man know. Let my feet be as beautiful as that of Jesus. Let demon not take over my feet. Oh. I will just do a biology for nothing. In the name of Jesus.
Lord, we rededicate our lives to you. Take our hands, O oh Lord, and take our feet. Let them be beautiful for your service. In the name of Jesus. Take our lips, O oh Lord, and take our voices. Let them, O oh Lord, be swift with messages from thee. In the name of Jesus. Take our hearts, O oh Lord. Let our hearts be your royal throne. In the mighty name of Jesus. May we not be hypocrites in your church. May the devil not fill our hearts as he filled the hearts of Ananias and Sapphira, making them to lie to the Holy Spirit. Deliver us, O oh Lord, from every shade of hypocrisy. Do the work of cleansing in our hearts. Purge our hearts with this word of truth. Let it sanctify our hearts, O Lord, that your spirit will dwell in us and will help us to live in obedience, total obedience to this word of truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, mighty God, hear and answer this prayer. That at the end, O Lord, may none of us in this church miss eternal life in heaven. Mighty God, hear and answer this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray.